Well, that was fun. You're probably wondering, or you probably already know by now you're saying, okay, we know what he was doing today. Got my welding helmet on here, the auto darkening one, and it's been a cold day outside in Charleston, South Carolina. <sighs> How do I want to say this the nice way? Uh, a lot of folks been asking me lately about body patching on panels. I've been doing a lot of body work myself on the 43 Willis MB tub. And well, when I first got the Jeep, it didn't look that bad. It was you know kind of wavy in some spots and kind of, you know, just not quite right when you looked at it, but it didn't look that bad until I started removing the paint off of it. And the floor and the sidewalls were coated with like a rubberized coating. Now, Dave and George Max, I am not making fun of you guys because it did look really, really nice. But underneath all that paint, when I took it down to the bare metal, I did not have it sandblasted. I, I did it myself with some paint stripper and wire wheels and some sandpaper and, and some grinding pads. Step by step, piece by piece, found an awful lot of holes and an awful lot of Bondo and an awful lot of metal that at one point had either been pounded in or you know kind of contorted, twisted, and filled over just so you couldn't see it. Nice job, it looked great. However, I wanted to take it to the next level. And here's where I'm gonna say this. I don't normally do a disclaimer in my videos. I am not the world's best body man. And I'm not the world's best anything, but I'm definitely not the world's best body man. Um, I just learned the skill of welding a couple years back and I don't weld an awful lot all the time. A friend of mine, you know who you are, uh, came over and showed me with a little 110 Harbor Freight welder how to weld and, and holes and do patch panels on the Jeep tub bodies. It's, it's really not that hard. I mean, here's where I gotta say this too. I gotta take my hats off to you body guys that can take something that's been damaged or crashed or twisted and put it back together because you do that every day and that's a hugely acquired talent and skill that I think I think that even if somebody an average person practice that every day I still don't think that they could reach some of the level that some of these guys I see do because you, you just got to have it in you and you got to anyway it's a, it's a good skill these videos I just want to show you I am using a 110 Harbor Freight flux core welder MIG welder it is no gas and yes I know shielded gas is way better TIG's better I know that Point is, is, I bought it for $85, and I got the helmet here. I believe it was 40 bucks. It's an auto darkening one. You gotta wear your safety equipment. Wear your gloves. I had a heavy, you know, duck jacket on. A lot of guys like to wear aprons, but you're gonna have sparks and stuff fly everywhere, especially when you're grinding. Now, I'm a better grinder than I ever was a welder, but I want to show you just how to do a simple patch. And uh, I will be using some body filler you know, to fill in the little pinholes, little imperfections, because I do not have the skills. Anyways, let me show you what I did. So as often the case on these Willis Jeeps, G503s, these tops of these wheel wells are flat steel and they're always getting beat up, whether the equipment, people standing on them, in this case, someone drilling a bunch of holes in here. This particular piece is off the driver's side, but you can see how warped and stretched that is. And so instead of going back there and trying to heat shrink and remove all that, it just got to the point where I was like, I'm just going to cut these out and replace them. This is the one from the passenger side. It wasn't quite as bad, but as you can see, it's, it's pretty dimpled up and beat all up. And so I just decided to place, replace them. What I did was draw a pattern on there with a ruler. I left enough metal that I can weld back because I don't really want to change or mess with that original, uh, with those spot welds there. So cut that out and I actually used the piece to trace a pattern onto some new sheet metal. This is 16 gauge and I just traced it out with a sharpie and then cleaned it up with a ruler and I'll take my cutting wheel and I'll cut just on that black line which will make a, it'll enough an eighth of an inch short enough so I can get my clamps in which I'll show you in the video later. So I've cleaned up this edge really well and I took a grinder and went back just put a little chamfer on it. I didn't want to peel these back because I wanted to keep the original spot welds on there if possible. This is the first time I've tried to do this with a big pan like this. Basically just got myself some sheet metal, cut a piece using the same cutout that I used, the cutout as a pattern. And then I also took the grinder and just put a little chamfer on that and clean it up just a little bit to try to weld it. I'm gonna use some butt joint clamps to try to put that together. The way these work is you've got this wing nut on the top and it just pulls this kind of cammed in thing against this bracket and you've got this little stop that goes through there behind your sheet metal. And you just basically stick it in there like that. Put your block underneath 
into the slot. Yep, tight in there. And then you tighten the wing nut and it gets your two faces all lined up ready to go. And it keeps the gap where it should be for your MIG welder. I've got these at Harbor Freight and they weren't really expensive. But all the welding supply houses should get them. I'm sure you can get them online too. They're invaluable when doing the sheet metal work. So I'm all clamped in here, all cleaned up. And I'm going to go ahead and get the MIG welder out and tack this into place before I weld it in. I'm using flux core wire with a MIG and not a very expensive MIG at that. Uh, there's far better machines out there and shielded gas of course is a lot better. It's not as messy. You're not going to get the spatter. And again, I'm just trying to show you that you can do this. So I've tacked the corners, I just put tacks in the corners. And the idea with the sheet metal, from what I understand, is you don't want to concentrate too much heat on one place at one time because you'll warp the metal. So I'm going to go back and forth across this panel a few times, about six inches apart, and then I'll wire it down to three inches apart, and then I'll just fill in all the gaps by just doing simple, short, little tack welds. On these tack welds, on the underneath side here, you see this little nub that's forcing through, showing we've got good heat on that and we're getting good penetration. That's what you're looking for. Again, I'm not a professional welder. In fact, I had, I was taught this by a golf pro and I never had welded anything in my life until I sort of monkeying with that CJ2A a while back. Anyways, let's continue. I've gone around and I've tacked where my clamps are. And then I'll remove the clamps and I'll take the soft pad and grind off my tacks and just make sure everything's secure. And then I can continue just little small pieces until everything's all filled in. So using my grinder and my soft pad, I've just knocked off those little tack welds. You can see they've done this. You can see the gaps here we still got to fill. But I'll just continue around this whole thing. And like I say, just, I'm working like every four to six inches away until I get it all filled up. And I'll show you the next time in the MIG how long I'm actually holding the actual tip of the welder there. I'm just going to give you an example of how long I'm actually triggering the stinger here. I'll put my mask down so you probably won't be able to hear me talk. Again, the flux core is really dirty, but you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing here. And that's about that's about an inch and a half long run, and it's just a series of tacks. I'm gonna let this cool a little bit, and I'm gonna move to an opposite side and work over there. I'm working around the panel here, not staying in one spot for too long is not to heat up the panel enough to make it warp. I just go from one side to the next, trying to stay about four to six inches away from my original spot I was working. You can weld up to an inch or an inch and a half at one time without any trouble at all. I'm lapping each tack weld or spot weld on top of each other about 25% just so I fill all the gaps and not create any holes. Once you've filled all the gaps or cracks and then the panel is welded fully in, you can go to the grinder and you can clean up your welds. Take your time and be patient here and allow some time for each one of your welds to cool. There are other methods of using a MIG welder to weld in sheet metal. This is one of the most basic and easiest to learn. Try to keep the stinger 90 degrees to your work and try to keep the tip of the stinger about a half inch off your material. Okay, so after I finished all my little spot welds and welds around, I went back with my grinder and just feathered it all in. Right there, you really can't hardly tell that I even welded a new panel in. Now, if you look over here, and we've got some of the older metal that I kept. I kept about an inch there, and I've got some work still to do there. But that's okay because it's got a little cut back from where the weld grabbed the old metal. And I can go back in there with some plastic filler and fill that in. You'll never know the difference. And for the most part, it's 100% safe. Still got some work to do, but you get the general idea of what I'm doing here. This is the underneath side of the wheel well. And this is just to show that I'm definitely getting penetration with the welder through the sheet metal there. Um, you want to be able to see that on the underneath side as well. Again, no professional welder, backyard shade tree mechanic, just to try and do some metal repairs and maybe encourage some folks to give this a try for themselves. Well, I hope you liked it. 
That was just a couple of patches I did. I'm still working on the body. In the beginning, I was talking about it. The body is nowhere near being done. There's a whole bunch of stuff to be doing. Try to do a little section at a time because in the Jeep restoration that I've been doing, the ones I've done, the body seems to take the longest time and is most tedious. I should have probably started that first. I always swore them down next time I did a Jeep restoration frame off. I was going to do the tub first and everything else after. But then I get excited and start wanting to do the frame and the engine. And, is, and that's, I think, what a lot of us do. Uh, again, safety equipment. It. All I used was a simple grinder with a, it was a, well, it's a hard disc, like a grind disc by DeWalt, and then I had some soft pads by DeWalt, and then I had a cutting wheel by DeWalt. I think total for the tools I used, I had less than maybe $225 in everything, and that's including the welder. Uh, someday I'd like to step up and, and step up my game and, and get another welder and gas shielded. That would be awesome, and uh, that'll happen in the future, but remember the, bait, the premise of the Team G503 videos. Average guy, average garage, average tools, you can do this. Uh, there's guys out there, again, let me say it one more time, you guys are awesome. I've watched videos of uh, guys welding, and some of those skills I see, it just it amazes me. And, and thanks, guys, for doing that job and being so good at it. I'm going to sign off now. Hope you're liking the Team G503 videos and the, and the series we're doing here on YouTube. If you'd like to follow along what we're doing with the 43 Willis MB, you can subscribe to Team G503 on YouTube. Until next time, my friends, keep it safe. Keep it safe. Don't be losing an eye and just getting yourself on fire. And happy Jeeping. All parts for the Team G503 1943 Willis MB build are provided by Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. Wait, 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 wait. Even though we got to the end, almost that cool part where the planet rolls up and you see the WWWRFJP part, I forgot to tell you one thing. After I got done grinding everything smooth tonight, got to be dark out in the backyard, I went ahead and shot the tops of those uh, wheel wells with the red oxide primer barrier three from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts, and then we'll do another video of how I actually finish it off and apply a little, a little, just a little plastic filler, and then we sand it and paint it. All right, guys, that's it. Hope you like the video. See you next time.